Hey everybody, Rich back here again for another Revit help video. And uh, today I wanted to uh, talk about templates. And I think uh, related to the Learning to BIM Facebook group I'm in, where uh, it's not just Revit, it's also ARCHICAD and, uh, and other software, that uh, I think this is relevant to any software, not necessarily Revit. Um, so really what I wanted to do was kind of just talk conceptually what um, uh, the, my template, what I have in it and like in how I have it set up and then, um, you know, kind of go go in some nitty gritty with some some other videos of some specific um, specific parts of my my template. And also uh, going back to the Learning to BIM group, the uh, I've seen some questions recently where there's been some, um, you know, like, hey, how do you set up your template, whatever. Um, so I figured uh, let's talk about let's talk about templates. So um, here's my template file. Um, conceptually, I really like to have just a very, um, I'll call it a light file, where um, I have, you know. Over time, you know, I probably developed this template over, you know, I've been in business for like 14 years, so, and using Revit. So, um, you know, what I had 10 years ago, five years ago, et cetera, is very different than what, what I have today. Um, I've slowly, you know, add, I do add, you know, some, some elements to this template, obviously. And, uh, you know, I found over time, you know, what are, what are certain things that I use that I, I repeat over and over again um, in in the majority of my projects. Not all my projects, but majority of my projects. So when it comes to families, things like that, I may have, um, you know, let me, uh, I'll switch over to a first floor view real quick. You know, if I'm gonna go into doors, you know, I'm gonna have a handful of doors. I have single, double flush doors, sliding doors, closet doors, and bifold doors, two panel, four panel, and that's it. I mean, there's a bunch of other ones you could get into and add a whole a whole big list, but um, I really just kind of keep it at um, a very you know, small handful. Probably same same thing with windows. Uh, actually, in windows, um, I just have double hung. You know, so a majority of my work too is uh, residential. So uh, the families that I have in here are kind of geared towards that. Um, but uh, but yeah, let me go back here. So I have it initially just set up here with uh, this is my starting view. Uh, which is just in, in Revit is a legend. Um, I'm not sure why exactly I set it up as a legend. It could be a drafting view actually. Um, but really, and I've seen this with other other file, you know, other companies' files when I do some some bigger jobs, and we have to look at, you know, we get the architect's model, things like that. But uh, very typical to have um, a drafting view or a legend view um, as the starting view. Um, you know, mainly because especially when you have bigger jobs bigger projects that the, if you have like a, if you don't set a starting view in Revit, it could be, you know, whatever your last save view is. So let's say, you know, I'm in a, a modeled, uh, a model view here's like the first floor or a 3D view or something. If it's a big job, it takes up uh, some processing um, from the computer to open that job. So it could take a, take a little bit of time to it actually open. So if you set your starting view to a view like this where it's light for processing for the, you know, for the computer to, to, to work, um, it takes it's much shorter time to, uh, to open up the file. So, um, and one of the things to, uh, to show for, with a starting view is if you go to, in Revit, um, I believe it's a view, I haven't set this up in a while, but, oh, here, here it is, in Manage. So under the Manage tab, you have a starting view. Uh, you just click on that, and you select the view that you want to be the starting view in your file, and hit OK. And you hit save, and then the next time you open it, it will always be set to this starting view. So, um, that's um, first thing with the starting view is always is kind of have that set up. Um, then <clears throat> from there, uh, just to go to um, the first floor. Uh, well, well, you know, obviously you're going to start with floor plans. So one of the things I like to do in um, in well in, in in my Revit files, obviously, but in you know, it, this this could be again applicable to to other other uh, software as well. Is I like to kind of as the project progresses, build up my my drawings. And what I what I mean by build up is when I start a project, 
you know, I have what I consider um, a uh, a what I call working views. So I have a actually a custom uh, uh, parameter in my project. Um, I call it drawing phase. And if I click here, in the, if you look on the bottom right, is um, you know I have working, framing, demolition, zoning. There's building permit, etc. So it's all the different phases of the project are already in in here for the most part. There could be some other ones, and and to do that, I can actually just go in here and just say you know like test phase. All of a sudden, I have a new test phase. Um, I'm just going to undo that. Um, but yeah, so when I mean in terms of building up the files, it doesn't matter if it's uh, floor plans, elevations, sections, etc. Um, you know, you'll have certain views that you're going to kind of reuse as phases. So t a t typical phases for me and um, or drawing phases, I should say, in, for me on a, on a residential project are the working where working or um, not necessarily a phase, but I have my working model views, which is essentially where I'm doing my modeling. They're not going to be drawings. They're not going to be views that are used for, uh, you know, on drawing sets. But then I'm going to have a design phase, where I have design drawings that I'm going to that, that I'm going to issue to to the client for their review. Once they're approved, then I'm going to move on to a zoning phase, and those are a set of drawings that will will be for the the township or the local you know municipality or city to um, to review and then once that gets approved moving on to building permit drawings um, and same same type of deal but uh, but every phase has a little bit more information in that in that so I like to use uh, like I said I like to kind of build up the drawings so what I'm gonna do is just to give you an example because this is just my template um, but you can see um, uh, actually, I'll come back to that. So if I, I switch over to an actual, this is an act, active project that I have for residential addition. So I'm in my my working um, model view. So you can see here I have I have a first floor, um, and this draw this project is actually currently under zoning review, but I've started to do the building permit drawings. So what I'll do um, once I have everything modeled is and I'm, I'm ready to start preparing a design plan is I'm going to duplicate this view so what I would do here just to give as a, as a Revit example is you know I would um, kind of right click the view and then you can see here I have duplicate view uh, in the case of going from working to design I'll just simply do a duplicate and the reason why I say that well and I'll show you once we move from design to to the next phase is when you do a when you do a duplicate or a copy of that view, the things like dimensions, notations, they go away in Revit. You know, so you can see here they they kind of go away. Um, then what I'll do is and going is I will go here to apply template properties. So in the template file itself, I have a number of different template view templates already set up. So in this case. You know, I'm creating a design plan view, so I'm going to click on design plan, and hit apply. And what that's going to do is going to kind of clean up certain things that may have been, if I go back to, uh, whoop, not that one, here we go, this one, uh, like section views and things like that that I wouldn't want to necessarily see in my, or section uh, callouts um, in my design plan, they go away. There, it's all controlled in the, in the view template. It just automatically turns things on and off. I, you know, if I go back here, apply template properties. There's a number of settings that I can kind of pre pre create um, for that view. So that's already there. But you also, if you looked over in the browser, it moved up to this design phase. So it automatically changed the drawing phase to design. Um, you know, so it's already ready for me to start um, creating the design plans. Uh, if I click on this other one, here's actually the completed design plan. Um, you know, and so as I complete the design plan, you can see here I have some notations that I've added. Um, I think these are no, yeah, these aren't even rooms at this point, um, but it just they're, they're notes for what the room types are. I have dimensions and whatnot. Uh, off um, the client kind of uh, accepts the. Uh, you know the design we're gonna move on to zoning plan so what then I do and actually I'm gonna just delete this one just for clarity's sake is I'm gonna move on to zoning plans so uh, again I'm gonna duplicate this view but this time 
I'm going to do duplicate with detailing. So when I do duplicate with detailing, you're going to see here, here's the new view. It kept all of the notes and all of the dimensions. So I'm going to duplicate with detailing, and then I'm going to actually apply template properties again. And this time I'm going to go to zoning plans, click OK. And once again, nothing's really going to change too much here. Uh, in terms of what you're going to see in the drawings, usually from when I go to design to zoning. But the other thing, though, is this drawing phase changes zoning, put it into the area of kind of these little subgroups that I have. I don't like to have, um, I don't know how, how this works in other, um, other uh, software, but I don't like to have like a long list of all plans, elevations, etc. So I like to create these subgroups and filter or sort my my project browser here uh, into these subgroups so that, okay, here's my zoning drawings, here's my building permit drawings, here's my working, mo like my modeling drawings, design, demo demolition, whatever else I may have. Um, so yeah, so it automatically go, it's kind of sorted by these drawing phases into these subgroups. So that is um, that, and then just to finally just kind of go through the process here. Um, now my zoning drawings are approved or, or actually in the phase that I'm in right now where they're actually under review, but I'm going to start cartooning my set for my building permit. Uh, again, I'm going to do duplicate with detailing. Um, actually, just to back up one second. So you can see here, um, you know, I have some of the dimensions and all that. If I go to the actual zoning plan, there's not a lot. There's a few additional dimensions if I look. Uh, oh, it looks like there's an overall here just to give the, the massing of the addition. Yeah, I have that one there. There may be a few others, you know, maybe here or there, but not a ton of different dimensions um, between design and zoning. But there are, a few, there, you know, there were a few changes or, or not changes, but, you know, a, a few little bit of layers of additional information. So now... Again, to take my zoning plan, you're going to see a little bit of a change because uh, between zoning and building. So again, first step, I'm going to do duplicate with detailing so I have all of the you know dimensions and notes that I had from there. Uh, when I apply the template property to this time, whoop, um, yeah, yeah, I'm in the right one. Sorry. Um, I'm going to go apply template properties. Uh, I'm going to select building permit, but this time, if you look up here, my view scale, I have eighth inch is what I've been drawing at. Now I'm going to go to the quarter inch. So when I hit OK, a lot of stuff's still going to kind of be there, but now the, the scale of the drawing has changed uh, because there's going to be a lot more information now in my building permit drawing. I'm going to have wall tags, door tags, window tags, um, additional notes, etc. So I'm going to change to scale, plus I'm usually uh, printing on a different sheet. And you can see here, I've, I've already obviously had stuff set up here. So I have some building sections already set up. So the section markers showed up as well. Um, one of the other things I have in these um, template properties, I have some view filters that um, either uh, hide certain types of building sections or elevation callouts or just section and elevation callouts entirely. Um, so, that, so that's why you saw that um, these uh, building sections showed up. And then if I switch over to here, this might be a little bit cleaned up, but you can see I've already started to add some door tags. I think I have window tag, yeah, I have window tags in here already. Um, I already mentioned the building sections, you know, so things are getting cleaned up. But this is just a a drawing that is um, in in progress. So uh, so that's yeah. I'm gonna kind of leave it at that for now. Um, I do something very similar with drawing sheets, like the sheets and you know that but we'll, we'll cover that in the uh, the next phase so um, so that's kind of the first part of my template um, if you have any questions please feel free to comment below the post or the video itself and um, yeah so that's pretty much it and until next time this is Rich signing off we'll see you then